Hello and welcome to another video featuring a piece of rather obscure test equipment. This time we have a Fluke 887AB differential voltmeter. Now if like me you haven't grown up through the 1960s and 70s you probably have no idea what a differential voltmeter is and I didn't have an idea either before I picked this unit up. Um, now just as a bit of an aside, uh, I'm still sort of halfway through restoring this unit. Um, I picked it up a couple, a couple of months ago and it was and still is in really bad shape. Uh, it came from an XMOD auction thing and it's really bent out of shape and everything and it took me quite a while to get the mechanics working and find the replacement meter and those things so I figured I'd do this quick video now uh, because it's probably going to sit around for another couple of months and I'll probably never get around to finish it and do a proper video in the end. So that's just of a really quick overview to show you what this thing is about and give you an idea of how it was used. Now, um, as a differential voltmeter, something that you wouldn't necessarily find nowadays, but the idea behind is that if you imagine you only have um, moving coil meters, there's sort of a fundamental limit on the accuracy of your readings because th there's only so much you can do with having a certain width of your needle and and the prints on your on your scale. Um, so to demonstrate that, I've got this set to the 10 volts range, and I've got it set to true voltmeter mode, so it acts like a normal voltmeter. And if I attach a voltage source, we see the needle deflects and. You can read off the voltage here, you can see it's 3. Point, uh, you know, 3.8 something volts. I mean this one is quite nice because it has a mirrored scale so you can get rid of the parallax error when reading it. But you know 3.8 maybe a bit m more with a guess. That's probably as accurate as you, as you can get with a moving coil meter reading the reading straight off. But what do you do if you want a more precise measurement? What if you want to know if it's you know 3.801 or 3.802 volts? You know, there's no way you can you can get this kind of resolution, um reading resolution on a moving coil meter like this. So the idea behind a differential differential voltmeter is that you have a reference voltage and you measure the difference between the reference voltage and your input voltage. So very helpfully, Fluke have this simplified schematic in their uh, in the manual for this. So the idea is that you've got a built-in voltage reference and you've got this um, adjustable divider, which is down here in this case. And the idea is that you set this divider until the meter reads zero, which means that your uh, input voltage is the same as what you set on your divider. And the trick here is that because you're getting closer and closer to zero, you can have smaller and smaller ranges. So for example, in this case, in order to read my 3.8 volts, I need to be in the 10 volts range. But if I'm getting closer and closer to zero, I can go into the 1 volt range, 100 millivolts, 10 millivolts, and so on. So I get much more resolution down in the lower digits because I don't need to be in the bigger range. And that's really the trick behind this unit. And I'll show you in a second how this works. Now, as far as specs are concerned, this thing is actually really amazing. So, the manual I have is from 1960-something. This unit is from the early 80s, so that must have been towards the very end of when they made it. But um, if you look at the, at the specs, it's really impressive. So, um, the headline figure they give is a DC accuracy of 0.0025% of the input and 0.001% of the range. Which is really good. Um, if you compare that to, say, the um, Keyside 34461A, which is sort of a standard bread and butter uh, six and a half digit multimeter, you know, that is effectively comparable um, with, you know, 50 years or so of development time in between. So, really impressive specs on this meter. Um, as I said, I that was basically sort of on a scrap heap. Um, I haven't, I've you know, readjusted all the mechanics and everything, but I haven't touched any of the, you know, trim pots or anything inside. So I'll be very curious to see how well it still, it still um, matches its specifications. And for that purpose, I've got up there my um, 34465A, which is better than 61, and it's been warming up for 
a while, so hopefully we'll have a very good comparison against that. Now back to our voltage of 3.8 something volts, let's measure it properly. So what I need to do is I need to switch the thing over into differential voltmeter mode and you can see over here it gives me the uh, basically the range that the meter will have so I can go to successively lower ranges. Um, very interestingly as well that switches over mechanically as I change the main range so quite beautiful again the mechanics here. Um, anyway, if I switch it over to the 1 volt range, that meter up here will now show the difference between my set voltage and the input voltage. And we know it's 3.8 something volts. I've got 0 volts set here, so obviously it's out of range. So let's set the first digit to 3, which we know it is. 1, 2, 3. Uh -huh. And you can see the needle just about moved to 3.8. Ooh, what's that? 3.84 volts, maybe. So that's a good start. I'll probably just zoom in a bit uh, to get you a better idea of what's going on. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. Right, so the next digit, let's get rid of the 8. So let's dial in an 8 on this digit. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So we're probably... Yeah, it's still... Still eight. So if I went to a nine, for example, here, you can see the needle goes just below zero. So we know it's this digit must be an eight, another nine. Now let's switch the range over to the next range. So that's the hundred millivolts. And again, so we've got three point eight eight volts. So let's dial in another eight here. Let's see how close we get. Uh, yeah. 3.88, just again above zero. If I went further, again it would go below zero. Next range, 10 millivolts. So we know, we can already see this is around 2, so 3.882, so I expect something around the 2 here. Uh, yeah, just about. And now for the last range, 1 millivolt. We have to use this sort of uh, a continuous pot here to get all the way down and it's really difficult to see the mirrored scale from the camera so my apologies for maybe not getting it spot on yeah this doesn't work at all from this angle yeah the camera is literally oh this is completely ruining it um yeah that'll do so the needle is now at zero, at least as far as I can see, and our reading is 3.88226 volts. So that would be the measurement in this case, and you know, beautiful number of digits with a moving coil meter. Now I'm sure you're curious about how that compares to, as I said, the 655 up there, which has been warming up for a while. So let me just get the leads up there. Oops. Let me just get the leads up there without knocking the camera over. And let's see how we do. Uh, do, do, do. This one goes here. That one goes there. 3.88214. So we are out by 12 microvolts. And that is quite impressive, to be honest, because as I said, this thing hasn't been adjusted or anything. And yeah, it was in pretty poor condition. So 12 microvolts difference. I mean, the 65A is probably spot on as far as calibration is concerned. So yeah, very, very impressive. And if you do the maths, those 12 microvolts are well within the specs of, of this thing. So you know, effectively it is probably as good as a 61A multimeter, uh, as far as uh, DC volts are concerned, at least. Um, it also has a AC-DC converter in it, but that is still broken. I haven't fixed that one yet. It's pretty low down on my priority list. But uh, yeah, I'll, as I said, I just want to get this video done so I can show you, and this thing will probably sit around for another couple of months until it gets finally fixed. Now, I'll just show you up as well what look, how it looks inside. So let me just turn it off. And remove the leads here. And let's see if we can get the camera up. One moment, please. 
outstanding production value. My apologies for that. Um, if we look on the top of the unit, it's made up of basically three big boards. Um, this one here is the center diode uh, supply plus it should also have the actual center diodes um, for the reference voltage on it, which should be here according to the manual. However, this one has a very nice um, heated, heated center diode up here on its little daughter board with a you know, heater control and everything. Um, this board does have a fluke stamp on it, so it is you know, presumably made by fluke, but I couldn't find any reference, no pun intended, um, to that anywhere on the internet, so I'm not sure if there was a special version for the forces or I don't know. Um, the board on the back here, that's the AC-DC converter, which isn't working at the moment. Uh, as you can see down here, there's a burnt up resistor, which may have something to do with it. And again, that may be due to the power supplies um, being bad or having been bad. This unit has a, or had a battery option. There used to be three, um, actually I think one, two, three here, um, nickel cadmium batteries and they uh, may have damaged the power supplies because they were completely flat and were probably last replaced in, I don't know, 88 or something. So, uh, yeah, lots of the power supply circuitry was stuff and some of the things it has taken with it. Uh, amongst those was this poor op amp here. Um, you can see, where did I put it? Hang on a moment. Oh, there it is. So that was the original op amp that was in there. It was an OPA111. So that was dead because the power supplies were at all over the place. So I just uh, shoved a TL071 in there. Um, and if I can f find the courage to spend 50 pounds, I will put another OPA111 in there. Um, this board is the null detector, which yeah, is effectively the difference amplifier between your uh, reference voltage and the input voltage. Again, originally, the first units had a mechanical null detector in there, which is a mechanical vibrator that switches the input and the reference on a capacitor and then the you know, capacitor averages out and effectively gives you your null signal if they are indeed uh, the same voltage. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, on the back here, as you see, I've got the mains just botched in like that at the moment because the original, uh, the original backplate had this really odd um, US style plug as the power in that and I can't really use it this way so quite not quite sure what I'm going to do about this but for the time being uh, that's good enough for me. Um, I just remembered actually another feature of these differential voltmeters, uh, voltmeters is that uh, actually let's get the picture yeah there's the picture still here um, they have a very very high input impedance when you when your reference voltage is the same as the input voltage so if you imagine a normal voltmeter, you just have the meter here and you've got current flowing through it to give you your readout. Now in this case, if your reference voltage is set to be exactly the input voltage and your meter is zero, that means, that means there's no current flowing through the meter. So your input impedance as seen by your, by your source is effective infinite. So that's also a very, very good feature to have. Uh, so in addition to the, you know, lots of digits you also get very high input impedance, which is good for measuring, obviously, um, high impedance circuits. So yeah, I hope you liked this whistle stop tour of this unit here. As I said, I find it quite interesting, to be honest, and it was quite interesting that it stood up surprisingly well to all the abuse it's gotten. Um, and as I said, maybe I'll get around to fix it properly at some point, but yeah, no guarantee there. Um, but yeah, anyway, I hope you liked this video. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll hope to see you again next time. Um, they have extremely high input impedance in differential mode when you're at zero. So let me just get the diagram out again. Ow. See, this is what we're dealing with here. Um. <laughs>